Hello like-minded people. Welcome to my channel. I want you to feel at home, to feel comfortable here. Please remember to hit the like button when you come in. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment and tell a friend and tell a friend to tell a friend. And please come back. You're always welcome. Thank you. Hello, 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 good people, and welcome to Passionately Intrigued Arts with Tracy. It's jewelry making time. I haven't made jewelry in a while. Another one of my passions. I have um, some orders that I need to get taken care of, and they want these colors in the small beads. So I have wooden beads and the yellow, red, black, and green, and then we're going to use metallic uh, spacers, these round, flat spacers. So I'm also prepping myself for a class that I'm going to be teaching um, for young queens, jewelry making class. Never done this before. I'm excited. I'm taking just one student at the moment, um, and I will take no more than three at a time because these are young girls, 12 and under, maybe 13 and under. I'm not sure if I want a teenager. So anywho and anyhow, I... Um, I make the jewelry, right? I make it, but I don't know all the terminology. I don't know all the names, so I have to learn and I have to know what I'm talking about. So if I'm teaching her, I want to teach her the proper names of different things. So this is practice as well. So let's get started. Let's stop with all the babbling. Um, it's up and coming soon. I'm not sure when, but I'm going to start with we're going to be using these are called needle nose pliers. So you see how they're shaped at the top. Needle nose pliers. And we will, we're going to make a bracelet. We're going to start with the bracelet. I'm going to show you the bracelet. We'll also use this stretch cord. It's 1.2 millimeter. Um, the bracelet is going to be 8 inches. So I've cut, cut more, which is 11, 11 or so inches. You need enough to work with because you're going to have to uh, put it together at the end and clip off the ends. Um, we'll also be using this glue, B7000. You can use E6000. You can use a cement glue, um, just a permanent glue. you only be using a tad bit of it. Um, what else? And just these wooden beads this time. And you can use any type of beads that you'd like and then any type of spaces that you like. So the first thing we do is tie a knot in the end of this stretch cord. And you tie it as tight as you can. Stretch it out. Pull it without breaking it. Just pull it. And then I usually do two because it turns out being such a tiny, tiny knot. You probably can't see it. So then I'll do another knot. And pull that tight as well. And so I tie that on top of the first knot. And I'm just going to stretch it. Stretch it. And so... You see that? Maybe you can, maybe you can't. There you go, that little knot. And then what we use, like I said, I'm learning the names of these things. I just use the stuff I make, the stuff I don't know the names of all these things. So the, we're going to tie that off with, let me find it. This is called a clamshell end cap. Yes, a clamshell end cap. Try and put it up in here so you see what it looks like. So it has two holes on the end. It has this little ball here. And this is what you put the knot in. And it also has a hole. You probably can't see this. A hole. Focus, focus. Right there. Anyway, this is a thick cord. So it doesn't have a lot of stretch, but it's thick. So you don't have to worry about your bracelets or whatever you're making breaking. As long as it can fit through the items that you're using. So this has a hole. And I'm going to stick this cord the opposite end through this hole. I'm going to try to. And like I said, this is a little thick, but I've done this before, so it should go in. There we go. All right, pull it all the way through, and that knot will pull right there. And what you'll do is clip the end of this cord right at the top of the knot. And of course, I don't have my scissors. Hold on one second. 
Okay, so I'm just going to clip that at the end of the knot. Careful knotting, not cutting the little knot that you made. Pull the clamshell end cap over that knot and close it. It has two balls, two, two ends, two reservoirs. Like that. Then you'll get what's called a jump ring or some call it an O-ring. So this is a six millimeter in the camera O-ring. Open it up and when you open the O-rings or jump rings you bring one piece of the wire to you and push the other one back. Never pull them apart this way because they'll snap, they'll break, they'll be weak. So you open it up, take the clamshell end cap and put this jump ring between these two ends. Make sure you get it in both holes. Hold on. The holes are very tiny. Okay. Now once you do that, hold on to your jump ring with your tool, what is this, needle nose plier, and you're going to take what's called a um, lobster clasp or a spring clasp. And Uh-oh, this one happened to be heart-shaped. So it has a little hole at the end, and you place that onto your jump ring. Then... You can take your fingers, you can take one finger and hold it with this plier and turn it together like that. Or you can use two pair of needle nose pliers. I hope I'm in the camera. I can't see that. Okay. Oh, and wiggle it until the two ends meet. Make sure that you have it closed because you don't want that to slip. You don't want it to slip out. Okay? So that's what's going to hold your beads on to get started. So all I'm going to do is I'll start with, I start with the yellow. And that's the smallest bead. That's a four millimeter bead. And the other ones are six millimeters. So I place the yellow. Then I'll place a spacer. This is called a spacer. And then I'll just go in sequence. Yellow, red, black, and green. And these wood beads, uh, the red, black, and green are six millimeter. Push that cord through. Add your spacer. So I'm putting a spacer between each wooden bead. There's the black one. Then a spacer. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do something. See? All right, let me back up. Hold up. What I forgot to do, that's why I have the glue wow is on that knot is to put a little dab of glue so i need to do that that reinforces that the knot will not slip apart which it shouldn't because i double knotted it and pulled it tight but i always um reinforce cover all your corners just to make sure you don't want anything falling apart on your customers friends whoever you decide to make this bracelet for so I'm going to, uh, off camera, I'm going to take this loose apart and then show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I've taken off the jump ring and the uh, lobster claw. So when you're working on something and you have to stop and do something else to it, you're working on a piece of jewelry, you use what's called uh, a bead stopper. So it's this little clamp and you place it on your cord if I can get it in there and that holds the beads on so they don't fall off so anyway in any who 
like I said, I'm trying to remember the names of these things that I'm using, and uh, I couldn't think of this to save my life. So I Google lensed it to find out, and they gave me the wrong name. So I kept looking for my order that I placed some time ago on, on uh, Amazon, and so it's called a bead stopper. So I've opened this back up, and you know, the little knot is inside. I'm going to open it a little wider, and this is very tiny and hard for you all to see. But you get the gist of it. And then you just take your glue. And I like this glue. Uh, it works pretty good. But I like this precision tip that it has on the end. Because I just need a tiny bit. So inside this um, clamshell, I would just place a little bit of glue on top of that knot. It's all you need. Close it back. And we'll place the hardware back on there. But let me close my glue first. All right, I'm going to grab it again. And place this O-ring on here. Oh, I dropped it. I'll do that off camera come back. Because I showed you how to do it already. Okay, I've got it back together with that little dab of glue to give me that added security. And we'll just continue with putting the beads on here. So where were we? We'll have to get a green. And then a spacer bead. So once we have all the colors on, just repeat the process. Start back with that yellow and continue. And let me show you, I'm gonna do this in speed dial. <laughs> I'm gonna speed the process up so you don't have to watch me put it all the way together. I'm giving you the idea of how to make it. And this is what it's gonna turn out to look like. Now this one I did with silver hardware. And then here's another one that I made with gold gold spacer beads and gold jewelry hardware focus okay so I'm gonna continue put this all together and when I get to the end I'll show you how we bring the two ends together Now what we want to do is we're getting close. We want to measure this. And when I'm doing the teacher, I'll have a, when I'm teaching the course for the young lady, I'm sorry, I'll have a ruler. But I'm gonna just use this for right now because I want eight inches. That's pretty much average size of a bracelet. Seven and a half, eight inches for a female. Just depends. I'm gonna come over here and see where we are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've about made it there because I have a half an inch to go, but what I'll need to save room for is the hardware that I put on the end to close this off. So this is all that I need, and I think it's about 20 beads. Don't quote me. I didn't count them. I think I counted. I think it's 20. 20 beads and 20 spacers. So now what we'll do is we'll take another clamshell. What is it called? Clamshell um, end cap. And just thread the cord through that hole that's right in the middle of the end cap. If I can get it in there. 
this cord is a little thick for a lot of this jewelry hardware. Maybe I need to open it a little further. But like I said, I use a thick cord for security purposes so that it doesn't snap. It's not going in here. So when you run across that problem, you can take a pair of scissors and cut your cord, whatever type of cord you're using, try and cut it at an angle. Cut that little piece off, and then I should be able to thread this through. I just can't see the hole. Hold on. There we go. So see how cutting that at an angle helped to get this on. All right, bring it down to the end of your beads. And you don't want it tight, tight. You want to leave just a little space, just a little bit, to give it a little breathing room. And then you're going to tie a knot at this end. And before you tie it tight, check to see if you've given it just a little breathing room to move just a little bit. Because if you do it exactly up against the bead and make it tight, then that's going to stiffen this and it's going to be hard to put on your wrist. So if you have that little space, then just pull your cord and tighten that knot. Stretch it and tighten it as best you can. Put your finger between the clamshell on that little space that you have of cord. So on that bead, and then on this side of the cord, and pull. And now I'm going to place another knot. And you got to pull it pretty tight to get the knot small because that clamshell end cap is not very big. So I'm making another knot to place on top of the first one and pull this as tight as I can without snapping this cord. But this cord... It's so thick, it'll take a lot to snap it. I just want it the knot small enough to fit. Oh, was I in the camera? I don't know. And focus, focus. It's not going to focus, but small enough to fit in that end cap. Then cut the end off close to the knot, but don't cut the knot. Let's see. Put that knot back in the clamshell and put your little bead of glue on it. Same process as the first time. Close your clamshell end cap together like that. And then you'll get another six millimeter O-ring, which I think, yes, I do have one here. All right, let's open this up. And you can open it with your fingers. You find where it meets together. Right there and twist one hand my right hand towards me and the left one away from me to open that up and then I like to hold it with my needle nose place it in that clamshell as such and so leave this open and I'm going to use, this is a six millimeter. Now I'm going to use some four millimeter O-rings and form a little chain. So I leave that open and these are tiny. I ordered five millimeter, which is just a little bit bigger because these, these four millimeters are really difficult to work with, for me anyway, they're so tiny. Then close it back together. So I push the pliers away from me and then I took my fingers and moved it towards me and then you can kind of wiggle it and it'll fall into place 
now what you have to do, which is uh, kind of tedious for me because I'm taking this four millimeter and opening it up so I can place another one on there. I'm just going to make a little chain. Ooh, see, this is really hard for me. Let's see if I can get that open. Yep, open that up, and I'm going to place another 4 millimeter on this one. Oh, boy. Did it go? Is it on there? Jesus. Oh, there it is. No, it didn't quite go. Hold on. It's on there, so now I'm going to try and close it back. Bringing my left hand towards me and the pliers in my right hand away from me. And wiggle it a little bit. When you wiggle it, that kind of lets the two ends of the O-ring meet. Okay, drop that down. And the one you just put on, try to find where the two ends meet and open that up. Now you bring your right hand towards you and your left hand away from you to open that up. Take another four millimeter O-ring, jump ring, and put it on there. And close this one up. Pliers away. Fingers to you. My camera's doing something crazy. Hold on, it's falling down. Hold it. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. I don't know. My camera was falling. It was getting a little heavy, I guess. I don't know. I didn't have it tight enough. But here's the little chain. And I don't know what you missed while the camera was sliding down. But I just put... I only put... How many did I put on there? The 6 millimeter and... You can add more if you like to. I'm not. These are kind of tiny. And then, actually, you can stick with the 6 millimeter. You don't have to use these tiny, tiny ones. But, um... Yeah, I'm not going to put any more. But this allow this allows it to uh, be a bigger size, you know, if, if the wrist is a little bigger. And so there you have it. Thank you for watching. I truly appreciate you. Perhaps you learned something because I am learning terminology along the way. Don't come for me. If I don't call it out right, um, I am no professional. I just love what I do. I enjoy these crafts. I love making jewelry, but I'm going to have to learn. I'm going to have to learn today. Not today, but I'm going to have to learn this terminology if I need to uh, teach properly to someone else. Okay? Oh, of course. Anyway, peace and love. Next, I'll be doing one more thing. Um, up and coming, uh, the matching earrings. I've already done the necklaces. Um, and that's a little longer process, so it's kind of the same process for the necklace as it is for the bracelets. So let me show you the necklaces. And this is a, I believe it's 20 inch. I believe I made them 20 inch. So that's one, and this is uh, in the silver hardware, and the silver spacer beads. And I made a gold one. To match that bracelet these ends are a little different and then another gold one okay and next i'll be showing um how i make earrings to match these are the gold and they're wire wrapped and these are the silver hold on hold it I can get them in my hands. Wire wrapped as well. Just a little different style than these. And I'm not sure how I'm going to do the next pair. It may be one of these styles. It may be something different. It just kind of comes together as I work it out. Once again, thank you. Appreciate you. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. I would appreciate it. Um, and if you are subscribed, I would appreciate it if you would hit the notification bell. My analytics show that not many um, have clicked the notification bell so that you can see uh, my up and coming videos. That would be so kind of you. But thank you anyway for your support.
Deuces. As always, I thank you for your time. I thank you for stopping by and much appreciation for your support. Click the notification bell for intriguing content. Thank you.